Okay, folks, it's time for another Affinity Photo Tutorial. Um, saw this done in Photoshop, and I wanted to see how easy it would be to recreate it in Affinity Photo. And act It's actually easier than doing it in Photoshop. So this is what we're going to be creating here. It's a 3D letter with a pop-out picture, uh, a reflection, and a drop shadow. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's get rid of everything that we have here. So we start fresh. And we'll go ahead and delete that. All right, we'll zoom out. And our canvas is a 2000 pixel square. First thing we need to do is create our letter and turn it into a, a fake 3D image. So let's drag it out. I'm using a Bebis New, which is a nice chunky font. So we're going to use the letter G for giraffe. And we'll bring it up here. We'll kind of center it up but more towards the top of the canvas. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and duplicate that layer. And this top one, let's go ahead and change the color and we'll make this a little bit lighter, like that. And we'll drag that down below our darker one. So with the bottom layer selected, let's go ahead and move it over so that we can start creating our 3D effect. Now for this to work, there's certain things that need to be connected here to really make it look 3D. Uh, some people will add shapes and then merge it all together, but there's a much easier way to do this. If we take this and convert it to curves, now what we can do is add in some control points and just add in the, uh, what we need to do. So that's one thing that needs to be adjusted. Let's put another point here, drag it over here and drag it out. Um, you may have to check a couple of times and make sure everything is lined up the way you like it. There's a few more things we can do with this. Uh, we can take this bottom point here, drag it over just a little bit, and and the same thing with this top one. And for a basic 3D letter, that looks pretty good. Let's zoom out a little bit. Now what we need to do is find the image that we want to use for this. And since it's a G, we're going to use the giraffe. So let's go to um, File and Place. And I'm going to grab the picture of my giraffe, open it, now we'll just drag it out, pretty much the size that we want. Let's go ahead and lower the opacity on that a little bit so we can place it exactly where we want within the letter because we do want the head kind of sticking out, but we want the body showing up on both uprights of the G. So once we got it where we like it, let's go ahead and bring the opacity back up. And before we do anything else, let's duplicate this layer twice, and you'll see why in just a minute. So let's go ahead and hide those top two, and we're just going to work with this one right here. Let's take and drag that on to the front G, and you'll see that that creates a mask, and mask it to the letter, which is exactly what we want. Let's turn on the next iteration of the picture and make it visible. Let's zoom in a little bit. So what we're going to do with this one, let's get the quick selection brush. And we want to select just the giraffe, not the background. So we'll go ahead and do a pretty good job up here at the top because that's the part that will be, the head and neck will be sticking out. The rest we can be a little looser with because a lot of that's going to get masked out. We'll size of the brush down, and again, just for the sake of this tutorial, we're not going to go crazy. So we have him, her, whatever it is, selected. All right, so I think we've pretty much got it selected the way we want. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So once we've done that, with that layer selected, let's give it a layer mask as well. 
Okay, so now we can see it's in, or the parts that are need to be sticking out are, but we need to do a little bit of cleanup here so that we can see through to the letter. So really all we need to do at this point is command click on the uppermost G and that will transfer the selection to the letter and let's go ahead and invert that and let's select our brush we'll make sure we're painting with black there and now we should be able to just clean this all up right here easy peasy and once we've got it cleaned up the way we like let's go ahead and command D deselect the whole thing now we need to add the rest of the image to the background of the G or the 3D relief of it. So let's grab that third copy of the picture and make it visible. And then we'll take and drag that down onto the curve. And when you look at it now, it all kind of blends together. So we need to create a little bit of contrast there. What we'll do is let's, let's select that background curve and come over here and do a levels adjustment and kind of you'll have depending on the colors and the contrast in your picture you can go a couple of different ways with it we're going to bring the black level up a little bit here and we may drop the the output white level down just a little bit so this way we can see the difference between the front of the letter and the shadow parts i think that looks pretty good right there all righty so next thing we need to do is add a drop shadow and that's a pretty easy thing to do let's just come over to our uh, undo all these let's come over to our shapes here make sure we have black selected as a color and we'll drag this out kind of like so and put it where we want it and since it's at the top of the stack right now let's go ahead and drag it underneath everything so we've got it there. Let's lower the opacity of that just a little bit. And then since it's a shadow, it needs some soft edges. So let's go to the live filters and add a Gaussian blur. And there we go. We've got that. All right, that's looking pretty good so far. So now what we need to do is we need to, let's go ahead and group all of our letter and image layers. Let's group those. And let's duplicate that group. And then we'll go up to the Arrange menu and we will flip that vertically. Okay, and let's go ahead and drag it down to where we want it. it should be right about here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now that's pretty sharp. So what we need to do with that, um, let's go ahead and first things first, let's fade it so it looks like a reflection. So let's add a layer mask to that. And we'll come up here to our gradient tool. And let's go ahead and just drag that out to where it kind of looks somewhat realistic. Alrighty. And then also we probably want to add a little bit of a blur to that as well since it is a reflection. So we'll come over to the live filters, add a Gaussian blur to that, bring it up just a little bit. And when we got it where we like it, it's looking good. Alright, so let's go ahead and rasterize and trim that layer so we can kind of distort it pretty easily so now that we have that selected rasterize and trim there we go all right so now what we want to do is use our perspective tool and we can kind of drag this out to make it look more like a reflection. And again, we're not going to go crazy. That's pretty good for now. And let's drag that 
layer below our drop shadow. And the last thing we want to do is kind of create a nice gradient background for this. So let's create a uh, blank pixel layer, drag it down to the bottom. Okay. And then we'll grab our gradient tool and we'll just drag this way. So what I want to do here is I kind of want to use some of the colors that are in the image so that it'll complement the uh, gradient in the background. So we'll grab that top color and let's sample a light part of the giraffe. All right, okay, click that, we'll take that. And then let's come down here, get the bottom color. Same thing, we're gonna sample, sample a darker spot of the giraffe, right about there. Oh, that's really dark. Let's do that again. Let's get a slightly less black. Okay, we might be able to darken that up just a little bit. And we're going to put this Gaussian blur in there. We don't want it to blur the whole picture. And there you go. That's pretty much it. So we created a 3D letter, have a pop-out picture, reflection, and drop shadow. Hopefully that was helpful. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe. Really appreciate it. Peace. Talk to you later. Until next time.